Okay, so switching gears a little bit, I want to I wanna talk about um, evol the evolution of strength training. You look at, like, uh, MMA, for example, in the UFC, you know, the Gracies put on the UFC at first, and they, they wanted to find out, you know, Kempo versus Sumo versus Jiu-Jitsu, who was the best. And yeah. now we see it today, you know, one of the most popular sports in the world, and it's taken on this evolution um, where, you know, there's, there's one sport that at least I haven't fully seen that evolution take place as strongly. And I want you to speak on it in terms, um, and the sport is, is strength training. You know, there's, there, the sport is powerlifting. Um, where do you see that sport heading and is it, is it going to take on an evolutionary change as prominent as MMA or mixed martial arts? The thing about martial arts and, and MMA, and, and we started this conversation making reference to martial arts, is that you, when you're fighting, when it's man to man, because the human element is involved and because the human is cystal, diastol, yin yang, you've got to blend those elements. You can't be so hard as a fighter that a guy who's really lanky and twisty like a BJ Penn used to be would like twist in and just choke you out right. because he's so yin that he'd just sneak right in there and just choke your hard ass out. And you can't be so soft that you can't take a hit from guy from guy who's hard. So the, the sport itself lends itself to balance. It's like you, you want to be a badass, you had better have a good stand-up game, but you had to better be able to wrestle too. Wrestle is kind of a – wrestle soft. Wrestling is soft. Where punching, kicking is hard. The sport of powerlifting – to the degree that you need a you need a balance of the yin, I think is limited to just your ability to move through the range of motion of three simple primal movement patterns. Mm -hmm. You're not twisting and turning and flipping and shit. You're just going like this, bang, and you're going like like that. You see what I'm saying? Right. So they can and to win, you've got to be as aggressive as possible in those three movement patterns. Where an MMA fighter might see 3,000 different manipulations of different movements throughout a match, a powerlifter is seeing three. Hmm. So he can take all his focus and concentration and in an imbalanced fashion, but I say that with a grain of salt because it's like, well, it's your sport. It's what you got to do. In a, in, in a very heavily yang fashion, they could drive all their energy focus and concentration into the singularity of aggression, mm. right? Where, mm -hmm. where if an MMA fighter did that, he'd be so aggressive that he'd get his ass whooped. Right, right, yeah. So essentially, um, for, the, for the sport of powerlifting, uh, you don't necessarily see the, a huge evolution taking place because it's, it's, there's inherent limitations in the sport, just doing three moves, basically. The other thing, too, yeah, absolutely. Another thing that comes to mind, too, is that the character of the individuals, the psychological character of the individuals who participate in and create the hierarchy, the, the structure through which that sport is presented to the world or, or is made available to participants, t tends to take on the characteristic of the activity. Mm. You see, so in my experience, and you know, if any power lifters are watching this, you're, you're probably very yeah, and you're gonna be mad at me for saying this shit. But basically, are very like hard headed, stubborn. This is the way it is. That's the way it's gonna be. And if you don't think that the way it's always been done is right, then you're a big pussy. And get out of here. Why don't you go do? They're, they're, I mean, they're so arrogant about the sport that they don't even consider like raw power lifting, real power lifting. It's like you gotta have on all types of equipment so that it's like the, we just build on top of the size of our penis with all this equipment and it's just yang, you know? So you can't even, that type of conversation won't even, you can't even have that conversation with these kind of guys. Right, it's you know closed, very closed. Right, or, and I go to yoga class, right? And, I, and I'm, I go to yoga class, I got these big old muscles, and I'm like, you know, I just lifted stones the night before, and I've got like, this rat, you know, uh, scratches all over my arm. And the yoga instructor sits up there, and he's a little, little guy with like long hair, and he's like so soft and yin. And the minute I like start talking, it, like, you know, he asks me some questions, or he's a nice guy, we're friends, and I'm talking about weightlifting, it's like he checks out completely. 
-hmm. Like he's so yin, he's so mm -hmm. soft that the minute the idea of lifting a barbell comes up, it's like, whoa. I don't even want to know about it. <laughs> you see the two ends of the spectrum oh, yeah. oh, there? Yeah. So that's what happens when you get people who are heavily on one side or the other.